it's Elizabeth Busby, and welcome back to Discerning Marriage. I'm answering another one of your questions, and here we go. I've been dating my boyfriend, now fiance, for six years. Oh, it's so long. We already have a date for the wedding, and I've set a down payment for the wedding reception. But as we've been going through marriage prep, a porn addiction came up. At this point, I feel like it'd just be easier to go through with the wedding instead of canceling our engagement and sorting this out, even though I am uncomfortable with this being part of our relationship. Do you have any advice? Yes, I do have advice. This is a very heartbreaking situation, you guys. Um, So it doesn't have to be a porn addiction in your life. It could be something else. I do encounter engaged couples with some regularity. It's not like super common, but I do encounter it with some regularity where something has come up. It's not necessarily this, uh, but I've also seen this come up. Um, So this video, I'm going to talk about this issue in particular, but I'm also just going to talk about, I think, engagements as a whole and like, how do you know if you should call it off and what that looks like? So this is really scary. It is really, really scary when you get to a point where you have put down money and you have put down like social pressure, I'll say, like you sent out save the dates and like the people in your life know that you're getting married and they have the date and they're buying their plane tickets and their hotels and all that stuff. Um, and you, you encounter something that gives you serious pause. So it could be a porn addiction. It is not uncommon for porn addictions to not come out until engagement. If a couple doesn't have the support to like walk through conversations that are tricky before engagement um, and they get to marriage prep and like formal marriage prep once they're engaged and this topic comes up and then the truth comes out. Um, Yeah, it's not uncommon that this happens. If it's going to happen, it often happens because they didn't talk about this stuff before. They didn't have the ability to talk about this stuff before. And it's really scary because you're like, I want to marry you. And I also don't want to have to deal with all the ramifications of like calling it off or postponing it, but I also don't want this in my marriage. So I'm going to back up and I'm going to talk about what it means when you get married. So you make four, when you, when you say your vows, there are four big things that you are saying when you come to the altar. You're saying that I'm coming freely. I'm coming faithfully, meaning I, so freely means like no one's forcing me to be here. Faithfully means, um, there's nobody else, and I'm intending to be faithful to you forever. I'm coming totally, meaning I'm bringing everything that I have, um, and I'm holding nothing back. And I'm coming fruitfully, meaning I intend to be open to babies and to raising raising those babies in the Catholic Church. But also, I just intend for our love to be fruitful. So if the Lord doesn't give us babies, biological babies, then we're going to be fruitful in some other way, and the world's going to be a better place because we're together. Um, so those four things are absolutely critical. In fact, if one of those four things is not present, right, if someone is not free, if someone does not intend to be faithful, if someone is holding secrets back or holding anything back, secrets included, and if someone is not intending to be open to life, then the marriage actually does not happen. So you need all of those four things for a sacramental marriage to exist. And even though civilly, the couple could get married civilly, sacramentally, which is the one that really matters before God that binds the two together um, and that allows you to live in the image of God in your relationship, that does not happen without those four things. Now, if this is new to you, I go into this in a lot of other places. One of the places I go into it is in my next step course for seriously dating couples. And I don't have the space here to dive into all of the catechesis, uh, but I do there in that space. So I spend a long time walking through all of this. And um, if you are curious about this, please, 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 you can find a link to the course in this description. I would love to accompany you through that course. But the reality is in this platform, on this quick YouTube video, I can't go into all of the details around it. So if you have questions, I'm going to assume that you're going to go watch the program um, so that you can get that full knowledge. But all I'll say here is that is what the church teaches. There are those four things that are necessary. The church teaches it because God teaches it. So that's what God gave us about marriage. Um, Those are God's definition. Those four pieces comprise God's definition of marriage, and we have to have them all in order for the wedding to occur, okay? So here's where things get dicey with this question. If you don't feel free to say no, if you don't feel free to walk away, then you are not free to say yes. So this person didn't say that they felt obligated to go through with it. Um, They just said they wanted to, and it felt like a lot of work to cancel it. But it's important that you look deep into your heart. And this is hard. This is hard to do. I wish that I could like be sitting down at a coffee shop with you and like hold your hands and walk you through it because this is a hard thing to do. But I'm going to be grateful that you found this YouTube video and at least you're getting something. So um, it is hard to look into your heart and 
be honest. But if when you do that, you must do it. You must do it. And if you do it and you look into your heart and you are honestly saying, I don't feel free to cancel because of the financial pressure, because of the social pressure, because my mom's going to be pissed and she like already paid all this money and like she's going to disown me um, or whatever, whatever the reason, there are so many reasons. If you don't feel free, you have to end it. You, the, the marriage would not be a sacramental marriage if you felt obligated to go through with it. That is really, really hard. But that is how important your freedom is. Now, if you do feel free and you're like, I could walk away, but I might want to just get married now and I might want to be willing to let this be in our relationship and walk him through it and accompany him through the healing and all of that, um, that's a different story and you can do it. And what I would recommend is you immediately get into therapy. If you're not in therapy yet, I would recommend he immediately get into therapy. There are therapists who specialize in pornography struggles and um, can help make progress through the healing and the um, stopping those behaviors and all of that stuff. It's clinically a little bit complicated, but it's possible. Um, I would recommend you immediately get into that kind of actual professional clinical help. Um, And then I recommend that you have some very serious conversations about what your sexual intimacy is going to look like when you get married. That is also outside the scope of this conversation, but feel free to message me on Instagram at discerning marriage and I can weigh in on your situation specifically. Um, But I will say that there will need to be very clear conversations around your sexual intimacy um, and what that looks like if there is pornography involved and you know there's pornography involved and there's compulsory pornography involved and all of that stuff. So Returning though to the the core of the question that this woman asked, which was, it would be easier to just go forward with the marriage um, than canceling it. I want to speak to that in particular. So like I said, if she feels free to walk away and she's going to choose to stay, that's one thing. She can go ahead and move forward with the engagement and move forward with the wedding and just put some safety nets in place to help protect and preserve their intimacy and their safety and the trust, et cetera, in their relationship. If she does not feel free, she has to call it off because you cannot enter into marriage. It would not be a sacramental marriage if she wasn't free but felt obligated to get married. She would not be being honest when the priest says or the bishop or deacon or whoever says, like, have you come here freely? And if she says yes, she's not being honest, right? She's not free. But when it comes to, like, would it be easier to just get married? No. No. It would not be easier to just get married. Do you know why? Because when you get married, the suffering will be crushing. (laughs) It feels like it would be really hard to call off an engagement. And it is really hard. Like I have personally walked through very, very dear people in my life who postponed an engagement and then decided to move forward and get married later. I've also known people who postpone an engagement, but then just call it off and don't get married. Like I have seen firsthand, like in my personal life, I've also worked with it professionally, but I've seen in my personal life, the agony that it would be to call off a wedding. But do you know what I've also seen? I've also seen couples who just get married anyway. And those people are miserable. And a lot of times those people end up getting divorced and then pursuing an annulment. We think as Catholics sometimes, especially young people who are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and discerning marriage, think that divorce will never touch you because you're Catholic. So obviously we know divorce doesn't exist. Civil divorce exists, but we know that like sacramentally, what God joins together, man can't break. So we're going to be fine because we're Catholic. I, if you have not heard this, I will be the one to break to you that being Catholic and believing and knowing God's design for marriage is that it will never break does not divorce proof you. It doesn't. You are in just as much danger as the rest of the culture. You're a little bit, you're less in danger if you pray together and worship together at mass every week. You're less in danger if you use natural family planning and don't allow contraception into your relationship. You're less in danger. I mean, there are, there are things you can do to help, but don't think that just because you know the truth about God's design for marriage, that's gonna, that that alone is going to protect you because it is not. And when those couples get married who saw the signs before but they just do it anyway for whatever reason, social pressure, financial pressure, family pressure, humiliation, avoidance, they are miserable. And a lot of time the relationship ends anyway. And a lot of times when those relationship ends, there are children involved. 
And the heartbreak, I mean, the rippling heartbreak is just, it can't be overstated. You may think it's easier to just go through with it now. Please trust me when I tell you it's not. It will be so much harder. So, so unfathomably harder. Like you think it would, you think this is hard? Unfathomably. Suffering that wouldn't even compare to ending it right now. If you just go ahead and get married, but you know you don't want to, or you know that it wouldn't be a good fit, or you really want to work this stuff out before, like it will not be easier. So this was a tough love, like big sister Eliza talking to you guys. This is a hard thing to do. Um, YouTube is not the best for this. Social media in general is not the best for this because these are like tender um, spaces in the human heart. And they require a lot of nuance. They require a lot of compassionate tenderness in discussing them. And I, I kind of lose that when I'm talking to a camera. Like I have your, I have your faces in my heart, um, and I have the people I know and love in my heart. And I'm kind of speaking to them when I do these videos. But like you and your situation, even this person's situation in particular, requires a nuanced tenderness that just kind of gets lost on social media. So find someone in your real life, like show them this video and be like, this is what Elizabeth Busby says. Like, can you help me in my situation navigate it? Um, that is going to be the most important thing, I think, to help you figure out what to do. And I also really want to encourage you to go to the sacrament. So go to confession if you haven't been recently. Um, stay going to confession. Like normally the church recommends once a month, I'd say like every couple of weeks, just to make sure that your heart is in a state of grace and you're able to hear the Lord very clearly. Go to daily mass as often as you can. Really just use this as this time of discernment when you're trying to figure out if you want to stay or leave um, to seep yourself in prayer. And the Lord will answer. I don't know how he will answer. I don't know what that will look like, but he is faithful. Those who seek, find. Those who knock, the door is opened. So he promises that. He's not going to abandon you. So seek him and seek his heart. Oh, you guys, I really do just love you so much. I have like such a place in my heart for you and all of these questions. Thank you for entrusting them to me. Um, if you have a question, feel free to leave it in the comment section of one of my videos or message me at Discerning Marriage on Instagram, and I will hopefully get to it on one of these videos. And until next time, stay close to the heart of Jesus and be not afraid. Bye.